All right, after doing a good bit of preliminary testing after I did the uh, repairs to the solder joints that seemed to be cracked or bad on the chassis for Adidas 1984X, I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect everything from the chassis from this tube here, get the chassis back over here on my work table and uh, get to installing the uh, cap kit and the new flyback and hopefully that will only improve things. Uh, this monitor has run for a good bit of time. Uh, I think I might have told him an hour. It's probably ran two hours or more and uh, I haven't seen anything like the uh, collapsing of the picture at all. It has stayed, you know, really very clear and uh, the only thing I can say is that it's missing some blue uh, and that's because of this tube. This is the old tube out of my Mortal Kombat 1 and uh, I've replaced it just because of that issue. It's a bad blue gun in the tube. It's nothing to do with this chassis. Uh, but everything else looks really good. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get this chassis loose, all my connections and all, and uh, even the temporary connection from the uh, the video signal from the game board to this. I'm going to try to leave that kind of intact the way I, I've got a little bit of a hack going right now just because I didn't have a connector to connect from his uh, type of video signal connector off of his uh, Area 51 cab to uh, what interfaces with uh, Mortal Kombat 1, but uh, I just ran some jumper wires basically. But I'm going to leave that intact and just, you know, get the jumper wires loose from my connection there and unhook the power and everything and, and then uh, go to pulling the anode cap off and all that stuff, you know, probably try to discharge the monitor first, be a little careful with it this time, you know. But uh, get all the other things disconnected and uh, get the neck board off the tube and get it over here on the work table and uh, we'll get to putting all that stuff in and hopefully it'll be even better when we're done. Okay, we got the bare tube sitting there that we got the chassis loose from and uh, I did discharge the monitor. No pops or anything so most of these chassis uh, discharge the uh, tube. But uh, anyway, we're uh, going to get started on this now. Got the chassis completely loose, neck board and everything remote board. Got it sitting on my little work table here and uh, I'm going to get started and install the cap kit and a new flyback finally and uh, I'm going to organize my caps first look through the list that uh, is in the Bob Roberts cap kit list and um, I'm going to take a look at the list and uh, organize all these to make sure I've got every one and as I do each cap I like to uh, make notes on the list um, what caps he actually sent me uh, and the values of them and the values of the cap that are removed from each individual location so like uh, like let's say here's a cap uh, you can't see it but it's C42 and uh, I like looking on the list and if it says uh, C42 is a uh, you know 100 UF uh, uh, 50 volt or something like that um, I take a look and uh, once I get all the caps organized if there's not a cap with that exact value I'll put down, um, you know, a little column where it shows that the one included in the kit um, maybe was uh, a 100 UF, um, you know, 100 volt instead of a 50 volt. And those are fine as long as it's at least the minimum voltage. The UF has to be the same though. And uh, then I'll make a notation of what I removed from that location on the chassis. And uh, sometimes operators or people who've uh, worked on these boards before they'll uh, think that maybe it'll operate a little better with a little larger UF rating or a little higher voltage cap and um, I just keep note of all of these just in case there's a problem later I can figure out maybe where something went wrong or uh, maybe where I should have uh, replaced a cap that is recommended to be a certain uh, voltage or UF in the kit and for that position um, maybe I should replace it with the one that originally came out of there because maybe uh, maybe somebody who did an upgrade to the chassis or something found out that that location was uh, you know uh, having bad caps and it needed to be you know up to you know a higher microfarad or a higher voltage rating or something like that but I like to keep up with all that so we'll do that as we do the process alright I went through our cap kit and uh, Check, made sure we had all our caps represented there and uh, checked them all off one at a time wrote down the actual values of the capacitors that are in the kit compared to the values that the kit requires and there were just a few exceptions and uh, they were all fine they were just a little higher voltage uh, like for instance C307 and C308 uh, they were supposed to be 100 UF 35 volt 
and they were both 100 US 50 volt and that's fine the voltage can be a little higher and uh, the same with some other ones there was some 470 UF 16 volts and uh, they were 25 volts and you know there were, there were a couple more like that but uh, that's perfectly fine there's no missing capacitors everything's in the kit just like it's supposed to be and uh, Bob always does a great job having those in there and all you just have to you just have to make sure you check and uh, don't get started and then find out you don't have a capacitor or something like that or get confused on down the line if you have maybe a slightly different voltage and all but I like taking it slow and easy and uh, organizing it all and getting them all lined up so you can just check them off as you do them and uh, should go pretty easy I'm going to start on the neck board and uh, get all those replaced so I can check that whole section right there at the bottom off and uh, then I'll go on to the main chassis alright just uh, give me a little update on the progress got the neck board completely capped all those new baby blue capacitors you see there those are all the new ones um, to be honest this kit came with enough to change out every single capacitor on the neck board except for one and uh, that one right there is the only one it didn't didn't have a capacitor for all the other ones it had capacitors for and I've replaced all them and uh, I fixed, uh, let's see, there's a trace right, what was the joint, right there, and that's for the socket for the uh, tube, and it was uh, like a cold solder joint, like it had a crack in it, so I went ahead and reflowed that, and uh, the G2 wire, that red wire right there, it was frayed, and the more I was moving the netboard around it looked like it was going to try to fray even more and try to crack and break so I cut it back about maybe a third of an inch re-stripped it, tinned the, the end of it with some solder and reinserted it and put some fresh solder in and re-soldered that so it's got a good strong connection now and uh, also just saying I'm going to have to reattach this wire here because it's come off since I've been moving so it was probably frayed too so no big deal. We'll get that reattached. And uh, everything else pretty much so far is looking pretty good. Um, marking them all off as I do them. Move my light around here a little bit. Hold on. But uh, there you see that those are all the ones for the neck board that I've done. There's, that's only about uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's only about nine capacitors there. But uh, got all those done for the neck board and then we're going to move on to these right here and uh, those are the majority of them, I think there's about probably about 20 maybe a little more of those and uh, there's the old capacitors that have been taken off so far all the old ones still got all these new ones to do so we'll keep you updated and just another little note here uh, I was just telling you on that last little clip this white wire, it, it came loose from inside here. This little, this little cap flips to close up and down, and uh, this wire solders in right here. And if you see, it was, uh, see if you can get some right here. It was connected right there. That's just a piece of stripped wire that came out of that, uh, that insulation, and it was uh, soldered onto that post. And it had a real weak point right there at the back part of it right back behind there at the back part and it cracked and popped loose while I was probably moving the neck board around to put the capacitors on it but it must have been weak already because I wasn't you know really twisting the wires a lot so it's kind of good I found that but uh, a note this is going to be uh, resoldered anyway when we put the uh, new flyback transformer this is for your focus this is a focus wire it comes out of your flyback transformer you got two wires the other one's a red G2 wire, and that's the other one that I have already resoldered. But uh, what I thought about doing is uh, after I get all these capacitors in here, you know, go ahead and, you know, like I fixed this G2 wire coming off the current flyback, the old flyback. I thought about going ahead and, and going ahead and fixing this and uh, put all the capacitors in, 
and do another test. You know, I like doing tests just so I can see when a problem goes wrong. I mean, if I put all the capacitors in there and uh, then I go ahead and put the flyback transformer in there and then I end up with some problem, I might not know what caused it. But if I go ahead and do all the capacitors and uh, and do a test and everything seems great and then I do the flyback transformer and then I have a problem, I know, well, something went wrong during the process of putting the flyback transformer in. And uh, this is my first flyback transformer. I've never done one before, so I want to make sure I get it right. So I'll probably go ahead and uh, just strip this wire a little bit, slide it up there, reattach it firmly, close this back down good and tight, I'll leave the current G2 wire that I've resoldered back in there, finish the capacitors for the rest of the chassis, and then wait for that uh, the new flyback transformer until I do some tests. Just uh, let it run for a little bit with these new capacitors in there, see how it's running and uh, I would feel a lot more confident in what I'm doing if I, if I go ahead and do that. And then go ahead, it'd be no big deal, just, you know, desolder this white wire again and the G2 and solder up the new ones for the uh, flyback transformer after I get the flyback transformer soldered and mounted into its uh, new home. But uh, I'll come back in a little bit and I'll show you some more progress on the other capacitors that have been installed and uh, possibly on this wire being fixed. Okay, just wanted to show you I fixed the uh, focus wire there. If you can see, stripped some fresh wire out, got the old broken piece out, resoldered it to the connection there. And all we have to do here is close this back down. Make sure it latches on each side. There's a little latch on this side and there's one on the other side over here. And that takes care of that repair. Then they're really good. I put a little hook in the wire and uh, soldered it in so it takes a little stress off of it uh, in case it starts pulling on it and the solder itself isn't strong enough. Uh, the hook will help the little hook in the end of the wire. But got that little repair made. And uh, like I said, we had the G2 wire, the little red wire that we repaired because it had frayed some. So that's from the old flyback. and. Uh, I'll probably redo all this again with the new flyback. I just want to test the cap kit when I get that all done. So, back to the chassis now. Okay, guys, I'm putting some caps in the uh, main chassis, and I figured I'd at least show you the process of putting one capacitor in. And uh, I don't know how well this is going to film on this crappy camera, but uh, I'm going to show you what I do anyway. And this is probably a little different than what some guys do, but the basic thing you know is to get the old capacitor out and get a new one in there without damaging the chassis and and to try to do it in an orderly fashion so you don't miss any capacitors in the kit like I showed you before on my list um, I like to go down through there and mark them off as I do them and the way I mark them off if you can see right here uh, this is showing like one UF 50 volt capacitors on the top line there and there's four of them you see I have a check mark by each one. Well, all that's from is where I was checking off that each capacitor that's supposed to be listed in this kit was actually physically in the package. And um, out to the side, I put little notations to myself that, uh, you know, the values that are listed over here, like this is one UF 50 volt, I just put over here that um, all of them are the same. All, all of these for you know C410, C407, C201, C110, all of them are in fact 1UF 50 volt. And uh, sometimes in the kits, let's see if I can find one down through here. Like uh, I don't know how well you can read it, but after you get down to where all of them are saying the same, the same, the same, I have a little star there and it says both 100UF 50 volt and uh, that's for locations C307 and C308. They were supposed to be 100 UF 35 volt, but if Bob has some higher voltage ones and he wants to put them in the kit, he'll do that. And it's just uh, like it like it shows lower on this sheet down here. It tells in the reading that uh, that's okay for that to happen. That's just uh, like for a higher safety factor. But you just have to make sure that your UF rating, your microfarad rating, is the same. And uh, of course they are. These are 100 UF 50 volt instead of 35 volt, and that's that's perfectly fine. And um, I just go down through here and uh, put a check when I check the package to make sure they're all in there. And then, like you can see down here on the neck board, 
uh, all of these have been circled also, well that's where I'm installing them. Each time I install one I go ahead and circle it and I know I'm done with that one and it's been installed correctly. And uh, we're starting up here on the main chassis doing the same thing. I've installed one at C110 and I'm about to install one at C201 location. And I'll just show you real quick. I go ahead and uh, I always look at my sheet and I'm like okay that's supposed to be a 1 UF 50 volt and we're looking for location C201 and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you I've already found it on my chassis that capacitor right there is C201 and even though I'm sure this is a little bit blurry if you look on this side right here closest to the camera look down at the base you see there is a circle that has been screen printed and the circle looks like a it almost reminds you of a yin yang symbol like white and black one side of it half of it is like a, a half circle of black and the other is just you know open it's just uh... it's just like an empty circle well that's showing you the polarity uh... the polarity is negative on this side of the capacitor and on this opposite side back over here on the other side would be positive and uh... if you look on the side of the capacitor there's a stripe on this side of the capacitor Gee, I wish I had a better camera because it's so blurry, but there's a stripe on this side of the capacitor, and in the stripe, it's a small negative symbol. It looks like, uh, you know, negative for negative polarity, and that, and that just lets you know that this is installed correctly. There's, you know, no bad screen printing or anything on here. Sometimes you get a board, they say that it can be screen printed incorrectly. I don't think I've run across that yet, so um, that negative on this side coincides with the current capacitor that's in there, and there's negative on this stripe, so that's the way the brand new one needs to go back in there. And also, just looking on the side of it, will tell you that the one that's installed here is also a 1UF 50 volt which is what the kit calls for and uh, I like to make note of that in case the one that's in here has been replaced by a technician with one of a different microfarad rating or a different voltage rating in case maybe it kept it kept uh, having that capacitor go bad and they upped it you know because they thought it would work better or something but so far I haven't run into that on this chassis or neck board or anything and around here on the other side these Neotech boards are, are pretty good because uh, they also show you on the back side the location of the capacitors too. And that was C201. Let me see if I can find that real quick. C203. There we go. C201. Let me turn the camera around. Maybe you guys can read it. I'm not sure. If you look right in front of the tip of my finger you'll see a circular screen printing and you can't read it but right on top of that it says C201 and uh, that lets me know that this is the bottom side of the board where C201 is located and that right there at the tip of my finger and that right there is both of the legs that I need to desolder to get that capacitor out and at the positive leg over here you also can't see because my camera is so suck <laughs> but uh there's a little positive symbol there and that lets you know from the bottom which side is the positive also and um, on your capacitors uh, when you take one out I'll go ahead and pull one out here this is a capacitor that we're going to be putting in there it's a 1 UF 50 volt and uh, there's your stripe right there that's for your negative there's a little negative symbol in there and uh, if you notice that leg that comes off the negative side is a little bit shorter the leg for your positive side is a little bit longer so if you're on the bottom side of the board and you're working you can do a quick check if you've slid this capacitor into place and you see that long leg sticking out uh, and since this board is screen printed on the bottom to show you where the positive side is it's a real quick way to tell hey do I have this you know capacitor inserted correctly because the long leg should be uh, through the hole where the screen printing, printing shows that there is a positive symbol and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just show you real quick how I get one of these out if I can set this up where you can see it and again we're going to be focusing right there that's what we're interested in right there and this pin and that pin and what I usually do I've already got my soldering iron hot I don't use a desoldering braid or a solder sucker right now at this moment. I reach around the front of the chassis and hang on to the capacitor 
and I actually use a very slight rocking motion and I apply just a little bit of heat on each leg and, and pull the leg up just a little bit at a time from one side and then I do the opposite side and I do it out and back like that just to keep from a great amount of heat being on one leg at a long period of time and it makes it easier to get the capacitor out uh, just watch okay we're going to heat up this leg okay I just pulled up on it and it's about halfway out and I can feel it on the other side and now I'm going to heat up this leg okay it just raised up a little bit on that side I'm going to heat up the other leg pulled up on it it's very close to being out heat up this leg the other leg okay one leg's free I can feel on the other side a little bit of solder maybe holding it sometimes you got to touch them just a little bit and it's free I just felt it release on the other side and I don't know if you can see in the video but you can actually see you can actually see light coming in from behind here I don't know if you can see it in the video but those two pin holes are completely open and uh, didn't put too much heat on there some of these circuit boards are delicate I've heard uh, the polos are, are real delicate. I've worked on one before and I didn't have too much trouble, but I've heard that they are, they're real delicate, so you don't want to put a lot of heat on them, and especially neck boards. You can lift the traces, damage the traces and stuff, and have to do a bunch of jumper wires or something like that. But anyway, here's the capacitor. It just came out of the other side. I was holding on to it just like that on the other side. I was holding on to it, and I would rock it this way, and then I'd rock it that way, out and back, and, and it would slowly release and pull out. And that gets most of your solder on the legs of the capacitor. There's not a whole lot of the old solder you have to remove, but since there is a little bit left, I set the old capacitor aside, and you might want to go ahead and make note for sure that it is the same rating that you're about to put back in, one US 50 volt. I set that aside. Get my soldering iron. I've got some desoldering braid here and this comes in a roll a little roll like that and it's supposed to hang on to it and you can close it back up but it always falls out you know so I've already been pulling it out so I've got I've got like a little coil of it here and I'm just going to hold the very end of it and uh, if you hold it too close to where you're working it's going to heat up and hurt your fingers so what you could also do is use a pair of needle nose and hang on to it near the end of where you're working like that put it over the positions where you're working and try not to touch any other solder point because it will suck the solder off another area if it gets hot enough hold it over it for a second and you can see it actually smoke just a little and bleed into it and it takes that solder right off that's pretty clean okay That's cleaned my holes pretty good right there. And if you look on the uh, piece of braid, you can see a little silver there. Some of it was on there from the previous capacitor I did, but a little bit more of that came out of those holes, and it sucked the solder out of those holes. So Now it's ready for the new capacitor. Set my solder and iron down for just a second. Got the brand new capacitor right here. And around the front, I make sure I insert it where the polarity is correct. Slide it down through there. Don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I can hold this uh, in a way that you can see. Very difficult to get this to focus. You guys can see there's two legs sticking through here. And there's one I've got in my fingers. The other's on the other side. Very, very hard to see on this, so. One leg is right here extending out and the other leg's right here extending out. And they're very tiny so it's hard to see. But you uh 
push your capacitor down till it's relatively flush but since these are very tiny ones they're not going to sit down all the way so there's going to be a little bit of air space underneath them and I like to take and, and bend one of my legs down to about let's say uh, maybe four o'clock position slightly just at a little bit of an angle and the other one up towards maybe ten o'clock a little bit and it seems to hold it in place on the other side but it kinda alternates the legs on the back side so that after you solder it you can clip them off go ahead and get my solder and my soldering iron There's one. There's the other, and that's it. Want to make sure you've got it good and hot so that it flows really well. And if you try to pull your soldering iron away, and uh, your soldering iron is like trying to make like a, a little pointed place in the solder when you pull it away. Just at, just pull it away quicker and see if it doesn't do that. And if it still tries to do that, pull it away uh, with the tip of the soldering iron on the leg of the capacitor. And any trailing solder will just follow up the leg of the capacitor a little bit if there's just a little bit. But if, you, if, if your uh, soldering iron is good and hot, it really shouldn't do that too badly. And then uh, I always like to take my little magnifying glass here and probably ain't working too good on camera but I'm sitting here looking and I move my light around a little bit just so I can check those solder joints and make sure that they look nice and shiny and there's no open places uh, it's best if it surrounds the leg of the capacitor and it looks pretty good to me and then the next thing I do got a little multimeter here and I set it on continuity and I just want to check to make sure that I've got a good connection there and I'll follow the trace and you'll, you'll hear this beep I'm going to set it right in front of the camera where you can hear it beep I'll put this on one leg of the capacitor that I just soldered in and then I'll follow this trace to another, something else that's in that trace so like right here can you hear that? I'm getting a beep and then there's one right here that means I've got a good connection between the leg of this capacitor and the rest of this circuit and then after I cut this leg off I'll go ahead and check straight from the solder point down here too and then do it with the other one so I put it either, either lead will work when you're doing continuity because whenever it's a complete circuit it's going to beep so I touch it to the other leg and I follow that let's see there's only a resistor there so let's see I see on, on this side is a resistor R211 I'll just touch it to one side of the resistor so that's got continuity looks pretty good I'll take some of these little nippers that I've got little nippers and I want to cut the legs of the capacitor off be kind of careful don't flex the legs too much you could crack your solder joint get it down pretty close almost flush you can leave a little tiny bit sticking off and snap and that's one right there I just snapped one of them clipped it off and then the other one right here get pretty close sorry about the telephone somebody sending me a message but there we go C201 we just clipped the legs off of both of them and we're going to check continuity one more time holding it right on the solder joint we made and that's good that's good and we check the other leg that we soldered in hold it right here and check it on this resistor and that's fine so we know we made a real good connection there it looks good to us visibly and uh, you know it, it, it's got good continuity and on the front there's your brand new capacitor in place on the front right there and like I say you see the black line on this side closest to us and look down below there the, the silt screening or the screen printing on the circuit board that's where your little black half of the circle is that means your polarity is correct and that one's in place and that's one capacitor and you would go a lot quicker than this if you weren't filming it but I just want to explain it. 
hope that helps people out if they've never done it before and even when you get up to like very big capacitors like this all the same principles apply you can see on this one probably let me stand up and see if you can see yeah relatively well there's a stripe on this side of this very large capacitor and inside that stripe there there's a negative symbol and that's your negative side that would be your negative leg on this side and these large ones really seat up close to the board really well and uh, you can't see underneath there but if you was to desolder that and pull it out there would be a, a black half of the circle there on this negative side but let's continue on and I'll maybe show you the rest when I get all the other capacitors in <laughs>